the greatest of them all. You know there's good news when the class president is smiling. Well, how was your first meeting with the teachers? The Immortal and Grunwald decided to visit each other with their students so we can all study together once in a while. And... Uh, we go to them first! We've never visited another magic school before. Do you think we'll get along? Yes, will they like us? What if we get there and something goes wrong? Oh. Calm down! Everyone will have a great time! I just know it! We'll just have to make sure we're wearing the right color. For example, red! Red is the best color for getting noticed. We'll stand out so much they can't possibly forget us. What if we go wearing all black? That way, everyone will know we take our studies seriously. No, we should obviously wear red! Hmm. Huh. Nocturna the Wise wears black and she's the most respected wizard there is. But Rosa the Adept wears red and everyone knows she's the greatest of all time. Let's not argue. Let's see what the magic mirror thinks we should do. The magic mirror? The one that Leshy made? Yep. Come. <laughs> these magic mirrors can do loads of things. Look, it says in these instructions that magic mirrors can produce magical yeah. sunshine bunnies as well. <gasps> Had an idea. Got it! Stop still! Oops! Is it cracked? Mm, it looks alright. Oh, Mira, so radiant. Tell me truly, please. Who's the greatest, most interesting, most important witch? Rosa or Nocturna? Hmm. Rosa and Nocturna are important for sure. But the most important and greatest of all is Yaga. Oh no, do you realize what this means? That we should wear green when we go? Like Yaga? It means the mirror is broken, and I bet the teachers are not going to be happy about that. We'll need a special spell to repair it. A mirror spell should do the trick, and for that we'll need a singing frog's reflection. <laughs> the blue raven's reflection. <laughs> And some chicken moss. <laughs> What's so funny? I said I'd clean up and I will. Sometime this week or next week. Huh? Those kids. Now we've got the potion. The mirror will definitely work. Oh, Mira, so radiant. Tell me truly, please. Huh? Who is really the greatest, most interesting, most important witch? Thank you for the potion. Much better. Now I can see clearly. I know the answer, and the greatest witch of all is her for sure. Rosa? Nocturna? Nonsense. It's Baba Yaga. Impossible! Eh, that's not news. I already knew that. Thanks to the mirror, now everyone else will too. Where's my mirror? <laughs> Stop! Give us back that mirror! <laughs> Sunshine Bunny! Sunlight Fold, hop where you're told! Hop to Baba Yaga's broom! Huh? <laughs> well, fancy that! Even the bunnies love me now! <laughs> uh, oh! Uh, wait! Stop still! Uh, stop still! I caught it! Hooray! The world has to know the truth. Where'd you go? Aha, there you are. Hmm. What's going on? Oh, well, so much for my mirror. <sighs> I think she's gone. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why the mirror still isn't working. Oh, it's the monster! Help! It's okay. It's me. The protector of the forest, Leshy. We met before, you know. What's brought you all the way out to the middle of my woods? We were just trying to fix the magic mirror. You broke it? It doesn't look broken, but we can make another one, just in case, as a spare. <clears throat> Here you go. Give it a try. Who's the greatest, most interesting, most important witch? Yoga! 
To tell the truth, I think Baba Yaga is the greatest. She helps moss and berries grow. She even cares for weeds and toadstools. Also, her swamp soups are delicious. Oh, <laughs> I was just passing through. Come by for soup. I also make moss stew with boiled roots. We'll stop by later. For magic mirrors, the person who matters most to the maker is the greatest. Want to try making one? I can show you how. Yes, yes we do. Yeah. Miro, tell me truly, who is the greatest witch of all? Marlene. Yeah, Marlene always has good advice, and she's always been around to help. I think I see now. The clothes we wear don't matter. It's what we do while we wear them. The color of our clothes doesn't make us great. It's all in the actions we take. And we know they love botany at Grunwald School, so we'll take them on magical plants. That's a wonderful idea. I'm sure Grunwald will be delighted at your thoughtfulness. The Perfect Party Everyone, quick! We don't have much time! Daria, what's the matter? An attack on the school? A pop quiz? No, Rooney, it's nothing like that. We forgot Teacher's Day. We have to organize a party for the teachers. A party? I love parties! Oh. Not just any party, the best ever. It has to be the perfect party for the perfect teachers. But they'll be back really soon from the Magical Council. We'll never get it ready in time. We will, as long as we all work together on it. The Immortal's favorite color is red, blue for the Professor, and yellow for Marlene. Hmm. The only garland we have is green. Hmm. In that case, you need a spell to change the color. Here you go. Say it three times and the garland will start turning all the colors of the rainbow. Magical! Oh, Jess, that's excellent. The Professor and the Immortal play every evening, right? Right, those two like chess a lot. Yes, although this evening can't be like the others. It needs to be special. How about three-board defector chess, invented by the wise men of the Kingdom of the Seven Peaks, you know? Of course, that's exactly what we need. Right, we'll need two more chess boards then. Got it. Whatever you're making smells good. They're coconut cookies, see? Perfect. Those are the Immortal's favorite kind. Mm hmm And he eats them all the time. So often that he always keeps them in his desk. <laughs> they won't be much of a surprise. What about a coconut cake instead of cookies? He doesn't have one of those in his desk. <laughs> Great idea. How about a cake in the shape of a school? It'll be tricky keeping the towers up. Unpredictable syrup. The stickiest stuff in the world. It'll keep any tower standing. Yes, good idea. Hmm. I just can't decide which hats would look better for Teacher's Day. Let me think. What about... Academic caps! Of course! That's perfect for Teacher's Day. Huh. I hope that the teachers will like them as well. Violin. Harp. Double bass. All the Immortals' favorites. Although... Marlene prefers the trumpet and the flute. Then let's have a whole orchestra. Starting with the flute. Hey, what's this thing? A joy tuning fork? Tap the fork and everyone will be in a delightful mood all day. With this joy tuning fork, the party will be perfect, even if something goes wrong today. Wait, what about our rehearsal? <gasps> no, my coconut castle. Uh, is that an earthquake? It's the joy tuning fork. There's something wrong with it. Hey, stop those defectors! They won't get away! We have to stop that tuning fork! Easy now! Stop immediately! That's it. The party is ruined.
It's my fault. Doria, if it weren't for you, no one would have remembered Teacher's Day. And we still have time to put everything back the way it was. Do we really? Of course. Okay, then. Let's get it done. Wow. Is this what I think it is? How beautiful. It looks like the students here have organized a party for us in order to celebrate Teacher's Day. Happy Teacher's Day! Happy Teacher's Day! <laughs> the joy tuning fork. I've wanted to fix that for years, but I lost it. How did it come to be at our wonderful party? I wanted everyone to have fun, but it turns out the joy tuning fork is broken. The chess pieces ran away, the caps flew off. All we have is checkers. Daria. It's the thought that counts, don't you see? We don't mind if we have caps or a certain game. You did this for us, and it's wonderful as is. Remember in go winter snow, remember when spring flowers grow, when the summer and fall come around, don't forget the friends you found. A walk in the woods. First, we'll show them the blue crow's nest. They're sure to like that. And then we'll treat them to the sweetest raspberries. Uh-huh. They'll be so busy licking their fingers, they won't realize they're already at the firefly glade. And here, the frog chorus, along with Lisa, will give a special concert. I hope you all will enjoy it. Oh, of course we'll enjoy it. Plus, they've seen everything at the school ten times over. All that's left to do is double-check the root. Want some? Plumberry with a hint of unpredictability. Mm -hmm. And if you'll continue this way, here we have the nesting place of the blue crow. It looks like the crow has relocated and took the nest with it. It took the entire tree. Come back! How are we supposed to run an excursion here if the trees won't stand still? These tracks, they're odd. They don't look like roots. Maybe Baba Yaga left them. What? I feel a dainty. A elegant. I didn't steal the bird. And besides, I'm having the day off. <gasps> look at that. What is it? Someone's stealing the raspberry bush. Where are you taking our raspberries? We haven't shown them to the boys yet. Whoever that was, he clearly knows his magic and the best spots in our forest. If this carries on, there'll be nothing left to show Levon and Vosco. We have to do something. Dorma and Lisa, you take the Firefly Meadow. The three of us will check the pond. The fireflies flew away at the speed of light. But look at these tracks. What kind of feet would leave these way out here? <gasps> Roots like feet, knobby knees, you'll find him amidst the trees. I know who it is! <gasps> Who's that? Whoever that is, he can't have the pond. Princesses, let's go! Keep your branches off our pond! <gasps> That's a bog! I'll just squelch back. Well, that was a slick move. Don't worry, how's this for slick? Time for fire. Helen, ready your eyes. Stop! It's Leshy, the forest spirit, the protector of trees and bees. Takes care of the forest, so everyone familiar with forest knows you should make friends with Leshy. Wait here. Ah! He means only good. 
Don't get too close. What if he eats her? <gasps> Greetings, spirit of the wood. We live as friends as people should. Mm -hmm. A daughter of Woodstream? Lisa Oakengrove. That may be. But why then, Miss Oakengrove, are you and your friends hurting the forest? Actually, we were saving it. From you. Oh, from me? <laughs> we certainly weren't hurting it. We weren't lighting fires or burning leaves. Oh, isn't this yours? Unpredictberry and Plumberry. We did drop some litter. Candy wrappers are so small. Could they really hurt this big forest? Didn't I hear you were planning an excursion? Well then, come on. We'll take a walk and I'll show you. Here, all living things are connected. <sighs> the blue crow loves the raspberry <laughs> bush. The raspberry bushes need clean water from the stream. Fireflies love the damp spots near the water. And the stream runs out of the pond. And if candy wrappers fall into the pond, even if it's the most delicious candy in the world, this lovely stream could dry up. And then the fireflies will fly away, the raspberry bush will wither, and the crow will have nothing to eat. That's why I moved the crow to another bush. The raspberries to the stream, and the fireflies closer to the water. Now, do you understand? Yes! We won't ever drop litter in the forest. That's good. Now for Lisa's concert. I would be honored to join the audience if Yay, I were. Yes, of course! <laughs> Thank you for the concert. Please tell me when you give another. And while I'm not here, I ask you, please, respect the forest. The Star Globe. That constellation is a giant. Wow, you're right. And that one's the gnome? You got it. Just like it says in the great astronometer's book. Then the next one is the big dragon. Amazing! Dario, you have all the stars memorized! Oh, but I know which one is next! See that one over there? That's the small dragon. It's like the big dragon, only it's smaller. Girls, I have your test results! The professor has finished grading your papers. One of you got a perfect score! <sighs> Whoa! Yay! An A+. Plus. Oh, I can't believe I missed two constellations. I'll never become an astronomer like this. I wish I may, I wish I might. Have this wish tonight. Make me an astronomer. <gasps> Look, girls. It's the great astronomer's map. <gasps> Whoa. Girls, it's not a normal map. It leads us to different tasks. Whoever completes them all gets the star globe. With that, you can become an astronomer. Really? This is a wish come true. But there's no way I can complete these tasks alone. Girls, can you please help me? I love adventures before bedtime. So, task number one. Find a star shooting up. Huh, easy peasy. Really? You know, shooting stars usually fall down. Even the magical ones. <laughs> then what if we just grab it and throw it back in the sky? Seriously? How would we do that? Wait, girls. I know. They say a star reflected in the magic well flies up into the sky and becomes a real star. <sighs> Didn't I tell you? 
That's just a myth. There's no way that this is going to work. <gasps> it worked! It didn't reach the sky. We have to catch it. Quickly! Star, wait! We won't hurt you! Yay! It flew up! It seems like it led us here. What's the next task? Let's see. It appeared just now. Light up the missing constellation. Over here, on the wall, there are drawings of constellations on the stone. But it looks like one is missing. Well, the lighthouse is in the right place, and so is the gnome. Ah, oh, the mouse in the hole! It should be here. Hooray! Now what? You forgot the nose. The constellation's called the mouse in the hole because there's a little star right here in the middle. Oh, it's nose. Your shiny excellence. Would you be so kind as to fly right up here? Yay! Yay! Hey, it's the third task. Go boldly into the cave. Even in such darkness, the stars will light your way forward. Head towards the giant in the sky. Okay, that's clear. Let's go. What's going on? It isn't supposed to get dark. Come on, we need to head towards the constellation of the giant. I think it was the moth, which would be right over there. <gasps> oh, way to go, Dorma! After that is the flying carpet and the lighthouse. Whoa, it's so bright in here now. Keep going, Dorma. Let's see, um, there's the wizard's hat, the big dragon, the little dragon, and the giant. Let's go. Are you sure? Oh, flying carpet, lighthouse, wizard's hat, big dragon, little dragon, giant. I'm sure. Quick. <laughs> now that's what I call a real adventure. But who's supposed to give us the globe? That would be me. Uh, hello. It's nice to meet you. You are... I'm the great <laughs> astronometer. Giant! So you're the reason the ground was shaking? Hmm. I didn't mean to scare you. Dorma, I'm here to fulfill your wish. This is for you. You can keep watch over the night sky, lighting up new stars on the globe, cleaning old ones, restoring their bright shine, and distinguishing those that fade away. I'm sorry, but there must be some mistake. I looked for the globe because I needed help, not because I could help it. I'm afraid I'd be a bad astronomer. I didn't even ace my test. What if I make a mistake? <laughs> even the very best of astronomers make mistakes sometimes. That's why I created the Star Globe. If you use it to check your work, then soon you won't be afraid of mistakes, and your wish will be granted. You will be a wonderful astronometer. Dorma, you're already so good at astronometry. You were the one who thought to go to the well. You remembered the mouse's nose. And in the dark cave, you named all the constellations. Girls, then thank you very much, Mr. Great Astronometer. I'll keep a close eye on the stars, that I promise. The Great Astronometer. Yes, I know him. He was my classmate. He's now an outstanding specialist. He always had his head in the clouds. Used to say it was easier to look after the stars that way. Oh, Mr. Immortal, the well's reflection became a star. So I need to add it here, a new star on the star globe. But what should we name it? The answer to that is easy. The real star tonight was you, Dorma. So naturally, the new star should be called... Princess Dorma! The Frog Stone. Don't open it yet. Let me guess what's inside. <laughs> it's Thumbelina, who is actually your secret second cousin. No, wait. It's Tom Thumb. Okay, now I'm ready to see. No tiny boys in here. I hope Levon and Vasco aren't nearby either. Here, it's my grandmother's frogstone ring. <gasps> wow, it's really beautiful. And it's magical, too. Just touch the stone and you'll turn into a frog right away. <gasps> Ribbit? Whoa. Touch it again, and you'll turn back to normal. That's so cool. Traditionally, you only wear this on All Swamps Day. But now I have to wear it every day. Since the boys got here, I've been so nervous that I keep turning into a frog. Worse, 
The timing is... Ribbit? Goodness, not again. Turning into a frog is dreadful, isn't it? Big deal. So you turn into a frog. You can jump and croak and swim around. You're making a mountain out of a toadstool. I mean, molehill. You have no idea what it's like. Rooney, I can barely croak before something happens. It's so embarrassing. Surrender, beast, or I'll turn you into a toad. <laughs> oh, no. The boys. I have to get out of here. Calm down. No hiding. I have a plan. Just put on your ring and you can rib it. You'll see it's going to be fine. You don't get it at all, Rooney. Don't go, Lisa. Is everything bigger? Did I touch Lisa's ring and turn into a frog? Look, Levon. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. It has a crown on its head. Maybe it's a water sprite. So pleased to meet you. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Hey, in El Dorado, frogs were a lot of fun. They were always racing around the ponds, while the Wondermont frogs are kind of lazy. Don't you think they look so bored? Why don't we make a race for them? Excellent idea. I'll bet on the frog with the crown. She looks like she could win. Actually, I'm a princess. And I'm probably going to beat you. Soon I'll tell Lisa that being a frog was cool. So learn from me while you can. On your mark, get set, rip it! <laughs> One more try. Come on! I got off on the wrong foot. I want a re-jump. Rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it. How is Lisa so good at jumping? This is really uh, so hard. Uh, uh, I'm jumped out. Mm, maybe she's better at swimming. She is a water sprite. Want to try? N no, thank you. I need to go find Lisa. You're lucky I'm out of shape. Rib by it. Rooney? Rooney? Where are you? I'm so sorry. I just got scared, that's all. Lisa! Lisa! I'm here! Right here! Nobody understands me! I croaked and croaked, but... Ah! <laughs> Welcome, dear passenger, to Wondermont Airlines. Next stop, the pond next to my hut. Hmm. Could I please have a moment to myself, uninterrupted? No wonder frogs are always hiding out in the swamp. Welcome home. It'll be crowded, but nice. My very own pond and statue. It does have a habit of breaking, but the magic is reliable. You can't run away. You'll put on frog concerts every evening. Oh, it's broken again. I expect good singing with harmonies. I won't tolerate sour notes. If I can't jump out, I'll have to fall out. All right, friends, the time has come. We're getting out of here. Jump after me. To the left, to the right. Don't just sit there. Come on. Rip it, rip it. Uh. Ah. Huh? What is going on? Where are you going? Wait, wait, wait. Stay with me. You can be a soloist. I'll make you a star. Careful. Look out. Hey, you. You had to fly. Oh, flying frog. Ah! That's our frog with the crown. She's flying. Lisa, I'm coming your way. Ah! Ah! You see that? She nailed that landing. Let's include this in the competition. Help me. Someone, I can't swim. Oh, rip it. Rip it, Rooney. Hang on. <laughs> Lisa, you won't believe what happened to me. First, I almost won a real frog race. Then I got captured and joined a frog choir. And finally, that raven who can't even fly properly. Wait a moment. I don't understand. But I understand. Being a frog is really hard. Please forgive me for not believing you. Of course I forgive you. Ribbit. Ribbit. But the boys are going to laugh at me. <sighs> I lost that race and I fell in the water. Well, let them make fun of us both. When you're with a good friend, it's not so bad. Huh? Wow, that was awesome! Can you teach us that spell, please? I want to fly on a raven and then use it like a diving board! <laughs> Listen, Rooney, it's a long jump, not high. 
You're not a grasshopper. Boys, you need to be careful this time. It's not winning if you break something. Ready, set, go! <laughs> the Newcomers. Wow, what a heroic painting. I've also got a shield like he does. I beg your pardon, Sir Knight. I usually summon this shield myself, but this time it appeared on its own. Is it broken? I hope the new boys like soccer. I hope not. I dread the notion of the three of you running around together. Don't worry, Daria. They seemed very well behaved if you ask me. <gasps> Well behaved, you say? I'll have you know. We do not walk about the hallway waving shields around here. But the shield popped out on its own. Hmm. What a lack of manners. I planted these sleeping herbs over a month ago. When are they going to grow? Have you tried singing them a growing song? Yes. Watered them with the rainbow? No, not yet. <clears throat> oh. What you need is some magic for the soil. Here. Back in my village, if something didn't want to grow, they would call me. Are you sure about this? Magical herbs aren't like digging potatoes. You must be careful. Just don't ruin anything. Please be careful. No! No! Now you've done it. It took a whole month to grow them. Please, you have to help us sort all this out. There's nothing to sort out. We didn't want your help. But you forced it! <laughs> Watch out! <gasps> what was that for? It wasn't me! Maybe not. What about you, Levon? I didn't do anything wrong. Heroes don't randomly wave their shields around. But a hooligan would. I'm not a hooligan, I'm a hero. <laughs> In training. Come now, don't argue. It is clear to me that something mysterious is happening here. Do any of you have a suggestion? Perhaps the boys have been cursed. Perhaps. Quite possible. Let's try to detect it. <laughs> Vaki has never been wrong before. There's no curse. Then it was on purpose. We were trying to help out. Oh yeah, helping? It's true. Oh, really? It's true? You did do it on purpose. Girls, you're starting a fight again. Are you sure you should? We must not make accusations before we figure this out. We're going to see Mr. Immortal. In the meantime, no more arguing. Hm. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should wait outside. We're just too dangerous for this school. We are? There, see? You're going to make the school fly away. As heroes, it's our duty to save the school from the two of us by becoming wandering wizards. Perfect. We'll wander around in search of adventures uh, and dinner. And so, the boys have gone missing? We've searched the entire school for them, Mr. Immortal. Hmm. Then we must find them immediately. Girls, stay right there. I think the boys must have been offended by us. Why should they be offended? It makes no sense. I don't know. What if they left because of us? Let's find them. But we were told to stay here. I agree. We should go find them. Come on. Rooney, did you find them? Not yet. Me neither. <gasps> Girls, look! I found raspberries. Dorma, we aren't here to collect raspberries. Look there, it's a floating rock. All sorts of them. Dorma, don't fall behind. But there are so many floating rocks here. <gasps> Come quickly, I found them. <gasps> what are you doing there? N nothing. Hey, what's wrong? Who are you talking to? The girls found us. Give me your hand. A real hero doesn't need help. You have to leave! It's too dangerous here! 
Are you listening? Get out of here now! We're not leaving you. Yes, and we're sorry. We know we were wrong. Give me your hand. We'll pull you up. Hey, Bosco, let them help us. They can pull us up. <laughs> Thank you. That was very heroic of you. Look out, everyone! Look, my magic! It's finally working again! Auto magic. It is a very rare magical phenomenon. You see, it happens when a magician becomes very sad. Their magic begins to lose its precision, and that is what happened to the boys. Yes, they lost their friends and their school, so of course they were sad. Exactly, and you girls were not very hospitable to them. Tell us, Mr. Immortal, do the students at this school sleep in trees? Yes, that is correct. And it's a great idea for a surprise. Here. Oh. Make our home your home. I hereby vow to defend Wondermont as my home. And I hereby call the Top Punk! <laughs> <laughs> Midnight Magic. I'm not sure yet. What do you think it could be? We must find out. <gasps> it's a giant piece of candy. Uh -huh. It's not candy, Rooney. You see? It's a frame for photographs from a sea trip. Oh, you're both wrong. It's not candy or a frame. This is a giant gemstone. I'm sure of it. I know a thing or two about gems. A gemstone shaped like this is called a princess cut. Well, in that case, this could be a spell to create gemstones. That's what it has to be. I agree. Let's make gemstones. I want a giant one as big as my notebook. Mm -hmm. As big as a pot. A teapot. Daria, what are you waiting for? The perfect setting. It's very important that the spell is cast in the right place at the right time. Of course, and I think the right time is now. Let's see what the directions say. In between two days, in a very special place. A place where the walls have knowledge. What does that even mean? In a place where the walls have knowledge. Hmm. Sounds like the library. Uh, between two days must mean at the stroke of midnight. Hmm. Can we do it earlier? We're not allowed to stay up till midnight. Well, then maybe we could sneak out just before midnight. <laughs> what about Archie? If he saw we were gone, he'd go tell Mr. Immortal. Mr. Immortal, look what Archie just showed me. This is a ghost chessboard. It was a gift he got on his birthday. Hmm, beautiful, isn't it? And convenient, too. The pieces move themselves. You don't even have to touch them at all. <laughs> and do they think on their own as well? We'll see. Archie needs to check on the girls. In the meanwhile, we can play a game if you'd like to. And then Archie can play whoever wins. Right. What is at E2? The King's Pawn, Mr. Immortal. Well, then go ahead. What are you waiting for? I'm so tired of that noise. Wish it would stop. We're going to end up with headaches all day tomorrow. He's gone, it worked. Woo! Yeah! Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> 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 I'm worried. I hope Archie's all right. All your clones out there might frighten him. You can't scare a ghost. Archie's a scary one. <laughs> On this night, with the timing just right, the darkness we oppose. Shine the light, gemstone bright, and clear away the shadows. Oh, how beautiful it is. Would it be all right if I take a little piece of it? Dorma, of course not. We can't destroy it. I know, I'm just kidding. We couldn't anyway. Look how hard that stone is. Actually, gemstones only appear to be hard. If you crack their weak spot or flaw, they fall apart easily. See? I told you, I know a thing or two about gems. What's going on, Mr. Immortal? I don't know. Well, that's interesting, because I'd have your queen in two more moves. Professor, I have nothing to do with it. Something's gone wrong. Let's go. What do we do with it? We can hang it in our dormitory and admire it. Hey, what are those thingies? Oh, looks like a ghost chess set. Archie's. But 
Why is it in there? It's stuck inside the gemstone and can't get out. I've got it. This spell is typically used to clear a place of ghosts. So then basically, this is a trap for ghosts. Good thing we sent Archie out into the woods. Otherwise... <gasps> no! Go away! Archie, go now! Daria, do something fast! I don't know how! We smashed it in time. Well done, Dorma. Sorry, Archie. Girls, there you are. What are you doing up at this hour? Hmm. It's a trap for ghosts. Well, fancy that. I thought we destroyed all these spells. We got rid of every copy when we employed Archie. Isn't that true? That's what I recall. But perhaps one of the copies survived. You know how hard they try to escape. Not this time. So the question remains. Who among you cast this spell? I did, Mr. Immortal. No, not just Storia. We all did it together. We hope you'll forgive us, sir. I admire your curiosity and your desire to try things out for yourselves. But you gave Archie quite a fright. Uh-huh. So a ghost can be scared after all. Let's hope you've learned your lesson. In the future, don't cast a spell unless you know what it is for. We will bring it to you first. Wherever you are. And we won't try to cost it. Very good, well done. Tomorrow, we will go through every book in the library. Then, we'll make sure there definitely aren't any more loose spells hanging about. But Mr. Immortal, today is Saturday. And tomorrow is Sunday. So you girls will have all day long to complete the task, won't you? <laughs> Flower Power. Oh, nobody ever remembers me. Nobody says a word. Oh. <laughs> Under my uh, direction, you might say. Actually, the girls did it all by themselves. Aren't they lovely? Ah, indeed. These are wonderful tulips. What place do you think we will win? Isn't it obvious, sir? We'll win first place. No doubt about it. Ah? Uh -huh. Hmm. We've never been able to win first place before. True, because we've never been in the contest. That's the reason why. Nevertheless, first place or not, these flowers look absolutely fantastic. My gratitude to our fine instructor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Immortal. But the girls did all the work. I've got mail. It's a card. But I wonder who it could be from. Let's find out. Hmm. To our dear Miss Baba Yaga. Look at the spelling. D-E-E-R. It's supposed to be D-E-A-R. What is this? We would all like to wish you, our beloved old woman, the happiest of birthdays. Huh? You wrote this, didn't you? Huh. So that's how it is. I am only 280 years old, and you're calling me an old woman? Hmm. You can have your card back. Just imagine, what if we really do win first prize? I think Marlene was just being nice to us. I mean, it's a flower contest for all the magic schools in the world. Hmm, does it really matter that much to all of you whether or not we win? Yes, it does. Flowers shouldn't be for contest. What are they for then? Flowers are what knights give to the fair ladies. Hmm, what knights are those? You've been reading too many stories. So what if I have? What's wrong with that? It's romantic. I wish there were boys at our school. No, thank you. Ugh, my brothers never gave flowers. I know, knights only live in fairy tales. <sighs> it's a shame. Oh, goodness, look over there. It's a knight. How can that be? Rooney, did you just summon up the knight? Did you do that just to tease us? I didn't summon anything. Uh-huh. As if I would believe that. Whatever. Stop arguing, girls. 
He's walking toward our flowers. Then, does he want to give them to Lisa? I don't understand. Why would he give me flowers? Let's find out. Hurry. It's too late. Our poor flowers. He took them and left. Then does that mean that they weren't for me after all? Shh. Do you hear that clanking? That's him. Uh, why is the witch's hut here? Oh, no! The hut is the one who picked our flowers, and the knight is saving them! <gasps> Archie! Yes, it was him all along. He was listening to us and went off to find a real knight. Hmm, he was trying to do something nice for us. Was he? Did it ever occur to him that we have a contest? Award you the order of um, what do you call it? Flower power. Mm -hmm. Hooray! 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 Girls, who has a barrette? What for? To use for a medal. Actually, order is an honorary society, so the barrette isn't necessary. It is. Our order definitely needs one. <laughs> Thank you, Archie. Well done, Archie. Look! Baba Yaga's hut dropped this. I saw it. A card for Baba Yaga. It's her birthday. So then, the hut wanted to give her a present. I sort of lost my temper. So, um, thank you for the birthday card. <clears throat> uh? We wanted to wish you a happy, happy birthday. birthday. What? Don't be afraid. He's from the Order of Flower Power. He's here to say happy birthday, too. Happy birthday! Oh, well, what a lovely surprise, girls. Thank you. All this kindness and I have nothing to share. I didn't prepare anything. But not to worry, I'll whip up some leech soup right away. Uh, um... You do like leech soup, don't you? So the angle formed by ABC equals the angle formed by CAB. And that is how you prove this particular theorem. Did you get all that? Sure, we got it. Ah, wonderful. Uh, by the way, what did you girls think of Baba Yaga's leet soup? <laughs> what else did she have to offer you girls? She had some treats for us, eclairs and donuts. And little tarts, too. I think I like the Napoleons most of all. <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs> Time out for Daria. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of this. Does the green one suit me? You should stick to softer colors. Light blue, cream. They're very stylish and will look better on you. Please be quiet. It's impossible to concentrate. Oh, do you expect us to whisper now? Give me a break, Daria. You asked, so we're all trying to be quiet. Hey, girls. I had such a funny dream. <laughs> Please stop it, if you don't mind. Oh no! What happened? Did I do this? <gasps> this must mean that I really do have powers. Hooray! Oh, okay, okay. Unfreeze. <gasps> Wake up now. Come back to life. Now move. What should I do? Ah, oh, I've got to get help! <laughs> Hi, Marlene! Daria, why are you running? To find help! Ah, oh, Marlene! Thank goodness you're back already! Daria, what is it? You seem worried. Are you all right? Oh, yes, you see. It's all because I've discovered a new power! You have? That's wonderful! Show me! Not yet. It's not that simple. The girls were making so much noise. Going back and forth, back and forth, so I told them to stop it. 
And they froze! Now I can't fix it! I don't know how! Wait a second. I didn't understand that. Back and forth where? Look! I would have made them more comfortable if I had known. How can we undo it? If you've the power to make it happen, you've the power to reverse it. Come with me. There's something I want to tell you. But we can't just leave them! The girls are going to be just fine. But you need to calm yourself down. Just hold on a little longer. I'll be back soon. Professor, don't you find it a bit strange that it's so quiet? Hmm. The girls are studying. No need to worry. Although, I do agree, it is a little odd. Ah? Huh? It seems you were spot on, Mr. Immortal. <laughs> I know, they're playing a joke on us. It's not a joke, Professor. And I don't see Daria. Where is she? Daria? Hmm. Daria may be in danger. We need to find her immediately. Of course, sir. But shouldn't we free the girls first? We cannot interfere with magic whose nature we do not yet understand. Come with me, Professor. Sorry, girls. Be back soon. You're an excellent student and you work hard. But the magic you were born with hasn't revealed itself yet. And therefore you're worried. Is it that obvious? It's all right. We all go through it. This might turn out to be a stroke of luck. Some unexpected stress has activated your power. So stress activates my power? But does that mean I can only use magic when I'm stressed? No, stress just helped activate your magic. Now it's up to you to learn how best to control it. Mr. Immortal, I think I know who's behind this. Hmm, do you think so? It's Baba Yaga. She froze the girls, and she stole Daria. Come on. And like you, I studied at a school of magic. And just like you, I didn't know what my magic was. Then, one day on a walk, I ran into a number of snakes. Oh, I'm afraid of snakes. Me too. I was terrified. And because of that, I shot up into the air. And that's how I learned I could fly. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Immortal, look! Over there! Why, that's only Marlene! What's the concern? It's Baba Yaga disguised as Marlene! Our Marlene is on vacation! But how did you manage to get down? At first, I couldn't. I hovered about for a long time, but I calmed myself down, relaxed, and it worked. That is the secret. Hurry! Grab her, Professor! No! I've got you! Professor, what is wrong with you? You won't get away! <laughs> Daria, are you all right? I don't understand what's gotten into the professor. Oh. To be one of our best, teach us! Oh. Professor, I'll cut off her escape. Oh. What are you doing? Stop! <gasps> Seriously? It activated again? Marlene said I needed to calm down. Activate! No, that's silly. <sighs> All right, stop! Shh. Really? It's so easy. That's all I had to do? Daria, you did it! Thank you, Marlene. I have to get to the girls. Uh, sorry, Professor, but you said Marlene was on vacation, yes? Yes, Marlene. Why are you here? I was missing the school so much, I decided to come back early. Our apologies, Marlene. We thought you were Baba Yaga. Why? Do I look like Baba Yaga? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, I'm back. All right, stop. <laughs> Girls, do you know what happened to you? We know everything. You froze us solid, or rather, immobilized us. Made us living statues. Turned us to stone. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried you'd be mad. Of course not. We're proud of you. You're so cool. Marlene's the cool one. She can fly up the banister. Woo! Who even knew? Daria. Um... Come on, don't be shy. Show us how you do it. Do you really want to see it? All right. But let's keep it our little secret. The Six-Legged Beast As in tales of ages past, everyone heals at last. No pain, not monster, nor bird. Heal it now with my word. Oh, Helen, that spell is from a fairy tale. I doubt it will... Wow, it worked! They're going to write about us in the Hero News! And you had doubts. Well, some stories are based on reality. All right, Chubby, fly! 
I will visit you soon. I promise. Why don't we go together? After all, it's not safe to wander the woods alone. But we've already studied who lives in the woods. Like badgers and other animals. Such as birds. The only scary one there is Baba Yaga. <gasps> I'm still! Now you can save me! From a reliable... <clears throat> from a not-so-reliable source, we have been recently informed of an incident. It appears that in the woods there may be... A monster with huge teeth that roars! Ooh. And three? Four? Maybe six legs? Six legs? Not six! Perhaps eight! Maybe more! In order to protect our students, and Baba Yaga, we have placed highly effective protection traps within the forest to, well, trap, we hope, to capture the... The hundred-legged beast? The cause of this commotion. Mr. Immortal and I shall go to the forest to examine and confirm this recent phenomenon. Or to prove it wrong. Us too! Take us too! Watch out, thousand-legged monster! My dear future heroes, don't even think about it. To keep you all safe and inside, we will be placing a new spell on the windows and doors to keep them locked. Today's class shall be rescheduled to next Tuesday. Now then, where is that special rag of ours? The one that erases spells. Mm. Why did they leave all of us behind? Yeah. We'd have shown it a thing or two. I think it might be crying for help. You're right. The hungry monster wants us to help by being dinner. Not at all. Six-legged beasts are quite gentle. It might be in trouble. We have to help it. Helen, we've never studied six-legged beasts before. As far as we know, they only exist in fairy tales. So it's best to stay inside, away from the roaring. <laughs> Chappy! No one believes me, but we have to help the six-legged beast. The professor uses this rug to erase spells from the blackboard. I'm sure it will also work on the locking spell. Thank you, Chappy. Brave men of Wondermont, forward! <laughs> and brave women, too. Hey, it's open. Helen! She escaped! Oh, no way! We have to go save her! And if we capture the monster, that's two heroic deeds! Yeah, so this is where that draft was coming from. It's fixed. No need to thank me. Just remember that I saved your lives, or you'd be in big trouble. According to the book I read, the six-legged beasts are very friendly and gentle. They only roll when they're in trouble. But where is it? I found it! Oh, you have a splinter. Let me help you. Please don't be scared, dear Six Paws. There, there. This will be quick, okay? Helen! Hey, monster! Release her! I, Vasco of El Dorado, challenge you to battle! Oh, no! Please, stop! Wait, don't go! What about our heroic rescue? We've already checked most of the traps. So far, the only thing that we've caught is Baba Yaga's hut. Yes. I haven't found anything yet either. I am beginning to suspect that we may be the only ones here, aside from the local fauna. Did Baba Yaga make it up? Ah! Huh? Helen, hold on! Let Helen go, or you'll be sorry! Ah! Got him! Now that we've caught him, our names will be in here... Ah! In tales of ages past, everyone heals at last. No pain, not monster, nor bird. Heal it now, with my word. Quickly, Professor. Helen fell in the pit. And so did the monster we defeated? Maybe? No. He's no monster. He's a sweet six horse. Phenomenal. But we must count his legs to be certain. Four, five, and six. Clockwise, there are six. And... My, counterclockwise as well. It is most certainly an authentic Icelandish Hexapolis. That's exactly right, Professor. An extremely rare beast. And absolutely harmless creature. 
In fact, they are so timid that nobody has ever tamed one before. I'll come visit you sometime. Uh, it should be impossible, yet somehow Helen has tamed it. That is the power of her kindness. It makes the impossible possible. Your kindness truly knows no bounds. <laughs> I think that I will stay here. Or then you'll have even more chances to show me how kind and hospitable you are. Ooh. Ooh. 